Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of Slaying 101 here on Game Nights. I am your host and your keeper of monsters and your monster of ceremonies, and you're waiting for her coffee energy to kick in. GM Savvy. That's Savvy Seaworth. And we're here to play Monster of the Week. Uh, before we do, I don't think... Well, there's, uh, I was going to say I don't think there's any special announcements, but we got some exciting stuff coming up on the channel this week, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, you just watched our uh, wonderful pre-roll video um, that highlighted all of the different uh, shows we currently have on our schedule. Um, our schedule is down below our faces. We have some fun stuff happening this week, though. Our next live stream after this will be Tuesday night um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, in which I believe we are playing over arms for another episode of sweeps week and then on thursday at 8 p.m eastern time um which i will let sid go into more detail about if she would like we have our premiere episode the first episode we had our session at zero a couple of weeks ago our world building um but our first episode of elegant magics subtitle to be added uh the second season of our good society game so coming out with us then obviously uh the rest of the weekend will be what it always is packed full of games with these faces and some other faces as well so our whole schedule is below our faces if you're with us on twitch um if you are with us later on on youtube thank you we appreciate you um we've had several new youtube subscribers this uh this past uh, couple of weeks which is very exciting so if you've been watching our stuff on youtube hit that little that little bell that little button that will tell you when we when we put up new stuff because thanks to lb hack em up where who you can find lb hack em up we have new stuff on our youtube all the time uh so yeah press those buttons we've also got discord and things like that that you can join and talk to us about all of our stuff i think that's all the important stuff i need to say um i'm gonna let these fine folks introduce themselves to you tell you what they got going on and who they are playing today starting with a gb gray beard a gray beard stavern and you can check out my schedule on the uh on the twitters uh, today I will be playing uh, Rexy Machina, the professional flake. That's me, GB. And hello, hello, I'm Christina Sid. You can find me on the Twitters at Greek Sid. Uh, yeah, I'm here a couple nights a week, including this Thursday. So, so, so excited to be coming back one with Good Society, which is fast becoming my, my favorite thing ever in the world. Um, but we're also utilizing the new expanded acquaintances expansion, which means all of the wonderful Regency longing and stares and and fights and and romance and magic. It's gonna be bonkers. Uh, again, if you haven't seen the world building the session zero, we literally created magic from the ground up. It's on YouTube. Check it out. Um, and come by and see us on Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern. Um, today, however, is Sunday. Um, and today I am playing Salgaz, the monstrous chosen one. It's me, Rob, or bonus stage Rob, or bonus underscore stage underscore Rob. I'm here in the UK, slowly losing control of my life as I have become uh, accustomed to a certain degree of tea and very spicy Chinese food. Uh, I don't really know where I was going with this joke. Um, it just sort of lost steam, as, as it always does. But you can find me consistently losing my shit over on twitter.com slash bonus day drop or here on Sundays as Professor Hanks or Travis or, I don't know, the next crackpot I cook up. Uh, that's really all I got going on. I, I am sorry. I need a monster. Uh, LB, please. Boy, I missed you, Rob. Hi, I'm LB Hackamup. You can find me at LB Hackamup on the Twitters and the Twitches. Uh, I'm going to be streaming there next on... It's Sunday, so 
Tuesday afternoon, probably around four. I'm going to be playing We Happy Few. Um, and then you can catch me on Thursday night where Lauren and I are going to go through uh, and finish Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs. And oh boy, did I lose my shit last time. So uh, yeah, check out my Twitter for my full schedule. Um, otherwise, you can catch me next on uh, Indoor Adventures. But today I'll be playing Abby. She is uh, a hex uh, and a smart girl. <coughs> That's me. And I am Sean at the Kraken King on Twitter. Uh, I do lots of stuff here on GGK. If we're live, I'm here either playing or running it. Uh, you can catch my full schedule pinned to my uh, top of my Twitter bio. Um, and today I am playing Hector the Divine. And that is our wonderful crew of players. And you know me, I'm Savvy at Savvy Seaworth. I'm your keeper. Um, this week is going to be wild for me because it's finale week on the other channel that I have games on. So Monday and Wednesday, twitch.tv slash encounter roleplay. Come hang out there. I got too much shit to talk about. So I'm going to not. <laughs> and that's how we deal with that. Uh, you guys ready to get started? The whole crew is back together. I'm so excited. All right. Then let's play a game the last time on slaying 101 the crew set a trap for a demon and it worked sort of <laughs> a little too well if anything um in addition to freezing the man they were after in place it also completely and totally froze professor jeffrey hinks as well as uh causing a little bit of trouble for hector and sally um who were were caught in the uh in the muck a little bit um but ultimately with your statue professor in tow um you captured the man who you now know is named rowan um asking him some questions that he didn't really want to answer about the demons who were after Daniel Elliott and Sal, um, who he eventually, after you threw him in the back of a truck in a cage and tied him up and then agreed to let him go and then shared a beer with and then gave a little bit of attitude and then Hector kind of threatened to smash his chest in. Uh, he gave you a little bit of information after all of that, um, that these, uh, these demon creatures are his brothers um after you got all the answers he was willing to give uh including the rest of the prophecy that his brothers are conveniently missing hector teleported him away and lost him and now he's gone and no one knows where he is and so the team set off to do some research <laughs> on uh, demons and half demons uh, preparing themselves for the fight to come. Um, you sought out Elizabeth Farthing, um, the, the oracle of sorts uh, that Sally and, uh, and Rex and Travis had once met with, uh, convincing her with the help of uh, Abby, who's good at magic or passable in her eyes, and Hector, who's very nice to look at and can lift her coffee table. Uh, you convinced her to uh, help do some big magic and locate the demons. The magic was mostly successful, uh, ending though with a problematic side effect for young Abigail. Uh, a familiar symbol appearing on her palm, glowing red this time, uh, but a symbol she had seen once before on the back of her friend, Wynn Crowley's hand. So, that's happening. Uh, before we deal with that, I want to pick up with Professor Jeffrey Hinks, who is back with us today. Professor, very, very sore as you were frozen, kind of mid-leaping out of closet to see if your trap worked. Arm forward, excited grin on your face. You finally... <laughs> Did I say come, anything cool? I don't know. What do you say? You come unfrozen and you say, Eureka! 
and you realize you're inside your Winnebago with a sticky note stuck to your palm. Oh, must have been residual effects of the temporal anomaly I experienced earlier. Uh, and he notices the sticky note and takes it and takes a look at it. What does it say? It says, call us when you wake up. Hmm. Well, okay. And uh, so he will call uh, Rex. <laughs> Rex, you, oh, we do need to deal with this um, because you had to leave us last time as uh, as everyone was heading over to uh, Elizabeth Farthings. So, um, you knew they were going to do magic. We can probably say Rex stayed in the car for backup. All right, great. Rex, you're in the car uh, outside the uh, the apartment complex and your phone rings and it's your friend, the professor. Rex here. Ms. Machina, it was a great success. Um, just one question. How did I end up back in my Winnebago? Uh, you've Flash froze yourself, Doc. Oh, perfect. Well, the the aerosolation of whatever material you use, it became um, it it, it uh, stayed in the air for quite some time. Hector even had a hard time, you know, moving through it. Oh, interesting, interesting. So not only did it freeze the subject uh, and myself, but I'll. Oh, work that out um it created a field of sorts to subdue uh angelic and demonic power hmm. hadn't thought about it that way uh because uh meta did at didn't abby feel the same thing so Right, and uh, he got frozen by it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Abby I, kind I, of, eh, and then immediately was like, mm. <laughs> I, I would like to point out, Doc, that um, you are neither angelic or demonic, and you were total TV dinner. Yes, of course, but I did experience a strange temporal anomaly shortly before this, and I did work in close proximity to the um components of the machine so i have uh, a feeling i could have stood to sanitize a little better before i handled these ingredients but uh abby also uh felt the effects of said uh aerosolation again i'll chalk that one up to the temporal anomaly but it's a good first dry run i think i'm close to something here we're uh we're following up and doing research uh, I can fill you in and uh, I will send you a short little PowerPoint. Perfect. Okay, Rex out. All right. And Rex does, yeah. sends, <laughs> sends the PowerPoint quickly of this is where we're at and what we're doing. Yeah, he hangs up and then realizes he didn't ask where you were. <laughs> But and I'm, I'm, ass I'm assuming that's included in the a, information. A Google pin is, you know, afterwards. Perfect. All I will, right. I, I will catch up with Rex. All right. You will catch up with Rex. Uh, I'll say this is happening as the all the magical, wonderful stuff is happening because it's my interpretation of time and I can do what I want so uh, just as you all are sort of finishing the ritual inside uh, Professor Hinks you make it to this apartment complex in Cedar Grove um, it is not hard to find Rex's vehicle <laughs> so uh, the two of you meet up um, is there anything you would like to do before we zoom back upstairs into the apartment Uh, nope, well, I will let the doc in and offer him a seat. <laughs> there we go. All right. 
And you hang out in the truck with the uh, surveillance equipment. All right. So we are going to pop back up to the apartment. Um, this ritual that you all have done with the help of Elizabeth um, has pinpointed an area on the map for you. Um, it is also Abby left you with this spot on your palm. She kind of just closes her hand quickly and uh, looks at the spot on the map. Okay. Uh, you look down at the map. Um, it is in the area of town you sort of expected it to be. Um, a while, I say a while back, like Five minutes ago. yesterday <laughs> or earlier today. Maybe I have no concept of how, how long this has taken. Um, you did have Professor Hinks and, uh, and Rex try to follow the car that had been seen in Daniel's neighborhood, which they had followed sort of out uh, to one side of town where that warehouse district is. Um, so you're able to pinpoint on the map, um, basically akin to an address, um, which is one of the warehouses uh, that is attached to a, uh, a now defunct business out there sort of on the uh, on the edge of town. So did it work? It seems to have, yes. Great. Great. Where are we going? Um, here. And she points to the map. Oh, it's down the street from our warehouse. That's perfect. Thank you for your help. Right. Um, welcome. She's kind of eyeing you, Abby. <laughs> so, everyone feeling okay? No unintended side effects? I feel fine. I'm ready to go. We should get going. Alright, I'll head over there right away, see what I can find. Okay, just be really careful and really discreet. Don't go straight in. Uh, could you... Could you put the table back, please? I'll do that first. It's just, it, the base is steel. It's heavy. Right. Uh, and goes and glass, picks up. Glass top. Glass top. Yes, glass. And very gingerly lifts up the table, trying not to turn it upside down. It's it's just, it's large, but it uh, is like no weight to him. It just doesn't want to bump it up against something and, and sets it down. All right, now I'll go. Thank you. Around, not in. Just yes. Discreet. I can do that. Quieter? Discreet? Quieter. Right. I'll be very quiet and discreet. Great. Sounds good. See you there. And he... Flap, flap, flap. Okay. Now, can you teleport... Uh, I'm going to the warehouse where we there. were at previously. So you're previously. going to your warehouse. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm just going to so walk the, the rest of the way. Down the block. Great. Yeah. Uh, so Hector flap, flap, flaps away. Um, Elizabeth kind of looks at the two of you. Where did you even find him? He kind of found us. Really appreciate your help. Um, I am almost tempted to say lucky to you. But only almost, right? He's very loud. Yeah. yeah. But he's very strong, and that's nice. Comes in handy. He's fairly straightforward, too. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that. I imagine so. Well, thanks. We'll, uh... See you... And she, Not like, turns and walks away. <laughs> she doesn't know what to say. All right. We'll try not to bother you, but I mean, if you need anything, um, I'll give you my number. Um, you know, we, we do the odd, you know, exorcism <laughs> or whatever. All right, here. Uh, thanks. Uh, 
This is why I let other people do the talking. Bye. Leave. I'll call you if I need anything. Yep. Um, uh, don't forget your many knives. Ah, shit. Jacket. Oh, the boot. Okay. All right, thanks. Goodbye. And uh, the two of you leave her apartment. She shuts the door and locks ooh, five or six locks <laughs> behind you. And then you hear the chain slide. Um, and you make your way down to the parking lot uh, where you see Rex's van, truck, uh, waiting for you, as well as parked nearby, an old Winnebago. <laughs> hey, Doc's awake. Good. Um, I'm gonna go back to the Haven real quick. Um, I just gotta do a little bit of research before we pop in. I figure we probably wanna get right. ready. Uh, Don't bring him, please. Right. Uh, you want me to come? No, no, I'm only all right. Has already dialed up the Tesla. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we might hit up some folks. I, um, I already called Haley. Oh, might okay. Wanna? Well, we should get a plan together as to, you know, are we gonna trap them or are we gonna kill them? I assume we're just gonna kill them, right? I think we might kind of be at that point. Yeah, so most easy and efficient way to do that. Holy water and chopped pieces, basically. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable doing that? Comfortable? Sure. Just the whole now there's ramifications sort of thing. That's what do you mean? This, the prophecy thing. Oh. I, I feel like it could have like 50 different meanings. Well, yeah, that's the problem with prophecies. They're never straightforward. So is us doing this like stopping it? Is us doing this making it happen? Is it neither of those things? Is this just a bunch of bullshit? He shrugs. I, I don't know. It's not. I mean, it's not based in science, and it's R rhetorical. It's 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 okay. I mean, if you want, we could do something that could see the future, but I feel like that's really powerful and really dumb because it could change easily. Yeah. <sighs> I say, go grab your research, and we'll see if we can stock up on holy water, I guess. Cool. Abby's just been, like, holding her hands to her sleeves like this the whole time. <laughs> so, nothing is revealed. Alright, um, I'll meet you just, uh, I'll shoot you a text when I'm done, and, and we can, um, meet up. Alright. Alright, be, be safe. We got other demons running around be at the haven i'll be fine but thanks all right gets in the tesla all right you uh get in the tesla and take off toward the haven i'm uh, leaving sally with rex and the professor um hector you have gone by yourself to mm -hmm. uh to the warehouse district what you doing i want to find the building that was pointed out uh on the map see what business is there see if i see anything weird outside okay uh yeah it's it's relatively easy to find the address um you find a a building that is sort of a uh, it's it's sort of like a storefront. Um, it is essentially attached to a large 
warehouse that is sitting behind it. Um, it looks like what used to be some kind of shipping company. Um, the front probably being a small office or something like that for the folks who worked there. The back being the warehouse shipping terminal. Uh, that kind of thing. Okay. And uh, not currently in business? Nope. Hmm. Uh... Hmm. Is there like a uh, like a fence? Like, is there an area like at the back of the warehouse, or there might be like loading bays and things like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can pop around and kind of look um, at the back. There are a few uh, like loading docks. You know, the um, the tall ones or semis can back in, mm-hmm. put things in the truck. Um, there's just like four of those. Is it any doors open that I can see, or like anything chained up, or? Uh, all of these sort of large, there are these like in the back, like the large metal rolling doors. Um, those look like they are padlocked down. Okay. About like employee entrances? Other like side doors, things like that? Uh, there's one side door to, to the warehouse that is regular, regular door sized, you know, human sized, (laughs) not a, not a giant door. Um, yeah, there's one, one sort of metal, uh, metal door employee entrance on the side. Okay. Hector's going to walk up and try to open it. Okay. It's locked. Now, I don't know how you want to flavor the angel thing about places you've been, things like that. Like if I can see the roof of the building, can I, can I fly up there? Or would I have to have been on the roof at some point or to go um, up on the roof? No, I, th- I think you you can do so since you can physically see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can pop up to the roof. Okay. Well, the flap of his wings lands on the roof. Any, like, skylights or anything you can see in up here or, a uh, like, a roof entrance? Uh, there's not a roof entrance entrance um there is like a um there's a couple of places like large like ventilation spots Mm -hmm. but no like it's not like a pretty skylight Mm -hmm. in the uh anything the ventilation is it like contained or is it just like an open air ventilation where like if i if i look through it i can see into the main building no, it's open air. So if you um, okay. sort of look, if you can look through the slats a little bit and kind of see down into the into the warehouse itself. Yeah, Hector will uh, head to one of those and sort of lifting it if need be uh, to try to get a better view inside. Okay. See if he sees anything. Yeah, um, you move the uh, move these sort of angled metal pieces a little bit so you can see uh, better down into the warehouse, and you see a couple of things um there are a couple of people inside moving around um you see in the center of the room it looks like there is like a like an old office chair um that somebody is currently sitting in um there are a couple people sort of standing around next to them and then behind uh behind these people on one wall um it's it looks like there's something uh, painted or drawn on the wall it's hard to see from this distance but you can see running down sort of the back of this warehouse wall what looks like a large crack that's like several feet tall um and there is this sort of like dark red light kind of emanating from it hmm Would this be anything that Hector might have seen before? Like, is this a hell portal? Hector's assuming it's a hell portal, but I don't know whether he would have any actual experience with that. Um, I mean, you know, hell in the, like, in the sense that humans think of hell is not really a thing. Yeah. Um, but, I don't know, portals are a thing. The demon dimension. So maybe. The demon realm hmm. perhaps how many are there down there you said there were a few 
Uh, right now you can see one person sitting in the chair and uh, two other people sort of nearby them. Uh, holds out a hand. There's a little bit of a of a spark as a cell phone appears in it. Um, takes a few pictures of what he can see as best quality he can with his older model iPhone. Um, and uh, makes sure he's at like looks through them casually like not freaking out or anything right now just scrolls through them make sure he's got some good photos of the uh of the crack and like the people in there uh and then just bamfs back to the haven um uh and just kind of casually says can anyone look at this hello is anyone back here yet not yet god they move slow <sighs> Well, I guess I'll just wait then. Right. And you wait. Um, a few minutes later, uh, you hear, well, maybe you don't. It's probably a pretty quiet car. Um, a few minutes later, though, Abby uh, pulls in in the Tesla and makes her way into the Haven. And Abby, you see Hector <gasps> sitting there. On the couch, probably waiting for you. Yeah, he had the game on uh, and like mutes it when she comes in. And, uh, it's like, oh, you're back. Hi. I didn't know how long the drive was. Uh... Hi. Hi. What's up? I I uh I have some things that pictures I took. Uh, I need someone to look at. Oh, Does uh, any uh... of this look familiar to you? Oh, um, in theory, where did you find this? It's in the warehouse. Uh, oh, um, oh boy, this is, this is going to take a lot to close, I think. I need to make a phone call. Can you okay. wait here and not go upstairs for like 20 minutes? There's an upstairs? Well, there's where the computer is. It's just a Oh, room. there. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait here. I was catching okay. the second half. Uh, just let me know when you know uh, right. what we should do. If, if you hear any weird sounds, just stay here, okay? How weird. Any sounds. Okay. I guess. It's your home. You don't think I live here, right? It's here? Fine. No, In it's the... fine. Nope. <laughs> Abby walks up the stairs. Unmutes the TV. Hey. Uh, Hector watching the second half of the game. Uh, Abby? Abby is going to go upstairs and try to uh, contact or uh, get into uh, hmm. she's going to try and contact her um, okay. through her text um, just to make sure that this mark on her hand doesn't mean she's been claimed or something like that because she knows what it was for when Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's probably going to be a used magic. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I do have plus one forward because the last thing I did was use magic. I'm keeping track of these things. Give me. All right, let's go. Four holy shit. Fourteen. Okay. Uh have you advanced use magic with Abby? Um let me double check. Since I had to move everything. I don't uh, I don't think so. Okay. Let's double check my expert. Oh wait. No. I haven't. Okay. Uh, then yeah, you do it. You 
the magic works that issue choose your effect it's going to be to communicate with ha huh. uh what does this look like um so uh, she grabs a book uh that one of the books that she brought back with her uh, it's a, a very old egyptian um text um and she pulls out some uh clockwork pieces um that looked like very old and she's going to arrange them on the desk in a certain way um and use them to channel her energy and they're going to like start combining and moving into sort of like a i i view it as like a viewing portal <laughs> okay All right. and it could just be like a voice sure so the um the pieces start to move and sort of force themselves together and as they uh they form into what is essentially a round uh shape on the table the gears lock into place and they start to spin turning each other um and this like sheen appears on the table uh in uh, in between all of these gears what do you say Hello again. Sorry, I know now that I figured out this thing, you said not to bother you too much with it, but um, I got this mark on my hand that was given to someone else by a demon. Um, I think it's because I tried to spy and find out where their children are, but um, this person had to die to get the mark removed, so I just want to make sure that my soul hasn't been claimed or anything like that. Can you just double check for me, please? Uh, there is silence on the other end for a moment as the sheen starts to kind of ripple a little bit um, and you just hear a very uh, a very quiet voice almost in a whisper um, hello to you too Abigail hi show me puts her hands over the table. Uh, you see the uh, the gears start to sort of spin faster and this uh, sheen sort of ripples a little bit more and glows a little bit brighter um, and then fades. Simple magic. Nothing to concern yourself with. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Just wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna have to die. No. But they may be able to find you. Oh. That makes sense. So I should probably not be here, huh? Not you. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'll keep uh, a low profile then. Um. There's like a hell mouth that we might have to close, so I might call on you. And she like taps her wristwatch um, a little later. All right. Okay. If you must. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I promise I'll only contact you if it's really important. Goodbye, Abigail. Bye. Cool. Bye. <laughs> The, uh, the sheen fades and the gears stop turning after a moment. She gathers everything up and puts it away. Um, uh, she like jogs back down the stairs. Uh, hey, Hector. Yeah. I might be being tracked. Um, oh. By the demons, so I don't know if I should be away from everyone or with someone who can protect me. Well, I can stay here. I don't want to stay here because I don't want them to find this place. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, we can go somewhere else then. Cool. Um, coffee, maybe? All right. Uh, 
I don't have a car, so I'll just ride with you then. Sure. Um. Yeah. We, well. Yeah. The, it, as long as you're okay with the Tesla driving itself. It drives itself. Y yeah, I don't actually have my license. Is it like magic? N no, it's actually science. It's pretty cool. You can like send it somewhere or like summon it back to you. It's kind of like magic. So there's summoning involved. With a phone app. How does it know where? No, never mind. We don't have time. Let's. Yeah, I'll I'll ride with you. I'm fine. And then I will text the group and be like, hey, so uh, I might be being tracked by the demons. Hector and I are going to hang out for a bit. Let us know what you guys have figured stuff out. We can talk over the phone. XOXO, Gossip Girl. Have you finally watched Gossip Girl? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the other three of you. What were you doing in the meantime when then you received the sticks? Not going to the Haven. No. Um. I feel like we kind of need, like, holy st stuff. Right? Sounds about right. My application to become a priest is still out. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh... I'm gonna send a text. Just give me a second. Text Haley. Okay. Where can I get a bunch of holy water? Uh, after a, a minute or so, you get a text back. Why? Kinda need it to kill some demons. Uh, you get another text back. I keep some in my apartment, but you owe me. Done. All right. So we take a trip. <laughs> in our favorite rocket ship to Haley's apartment across Cedar Grove near Canvas. Um, easy enough. Uh, Sal, you've been there before. So yes. you make your way up uh, to someone's apartment. Once again, you knock, you hear many locks being unlocked on the other side of the door. Um, and uh, sort of opening the door, you see Haley once again. That's blonde hair sort of piled up on top of her head. Uh, gym shorts, t shirt. So, how much do you need? About three demons worth. <sighs> yeah. Ouch. All right. Um,. Hang on. We made a we made a bunch in like the warehouse once, and it just like came out of the ceiling. How'd you hope one do that? Huh? It was a diffusion thing. There were bones of saints involved. Yeah, you guys did that, <gasps> and took a bunch of shit from the church. <laughs> Did I just give something away? Oops. <laughs> you know, that for, I don't know that Haley was involved in that. I know, she which is it? awesome, because that that's that's why I said something, so that there could be the awkward. I don't... Thing. What? Yeah, just a bunch of water came out of the ceiling, and it was all holy water. All right, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. Shit. Who did that? I mean, if there's water coming out of your ceiling, you got either a problem or a sprinkler system. Sprinklers, yeah, it was, it was a sprinkler system. It was just the sprinkler system had holy water. Okay. Like, I had to suit up. It was a whole thing. 
I'm sure it was. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Just ready to take care of some stuff. Because you don't seem okay. I have to go kill a bunch of demons. It's not... It's not a good day. It's not a bad day. It's just not a great day, you know? Right. I'm just going to go get the... Thanks. Cool. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Haley leaves um, and comes back with three, um, like, gallon jugs like you would buy distilled water in. Um, but... Uh, comes back with three of them, sort of two in one hand and one in the other. They sort of do ya. That'll work. Like I said, you owe me. No problem. Again. Probably. How many more is that now? Like three O's? At least. Alright, well. You got my number. That I do. Uh, just in case you get shit gets really bad, um, there are three at least half demons holed up in the warehouse district. Just FYI. All right. You sure they're off? No. Might be full. Right. Do you need my help? Is that... I mean, it wouldn't hurt. I, can't, I really can't tell what is going on I don't like asking right for now. help, okay? Like, I already feel bad enough, like, taking your holy water and stuff. Like, I shouldn't even be touching this. Like, this could... Do you want to come kick some demon ass? Yeah. I'm fucking bored. Well, come on. I should change. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah. It goes to suit up. And uh, Rex and, uh, and the professor. Sally comes back down the stairs of the apartment complex with jugs of water in hand. And another person <laughs> following her. Uh, Rex, you know Haley. <laughs> Hanks leans over to Rex as he sees them coming down and, and just, do you have a holy water supplier? Well, kinda. Last time we needed holy water, we had to steal bones of saints to put in the sprinkler system of the warehouse so that we could melt the vampires and anyway yeah there were latex suits involved and stuff for our own demon so oh that's fascinating well i feel less bad about knocking up a church the other day it happens and knocking over closer. not knocking up <laughs> you know <laughs> knocking over maybe we but we got Rex there we got there Rex Rex lets we got you there eventually you I thought about that a church. Church. Yep. <laughs> science we did mm -hmm. you're doing uh no okay but so. she got them for you So Watch. she has not put that together <laughs> at all. Okay. But she did do that. As they get closer to the car, Professor Hinks, you can also see that she's got a big fuck off sword strapped to her back. All right, scooch over. Haley's coming. Hello, hello. Uh, Haley, you remember Rexy? Rex. Uh, this is, uh, Hinks. Professor Jeffrey Hinks. Professor? He just likes to call himself that. Uh, he's real good at Hinks, though. Yeah. 
All right, you call yourself whatever you want. I don't give a shit. So, where are we going? Uh, I think to meet up with the rest of the crew before we head over. Right. So, demons, yeah? Positive? It's got positive. word of mouth. Yeah. Oh, yes. We laid a very successful trap earlier. Oh, good. Good start. Yes. Rexy spins in the, like, office chair that she was sliding around at the terminals for and then pops up front, opens the hatch, and climbs into the uh, cabin and starts the derp mobile up and Okay. Where are you going? Where are we going? <laughs> she doesn't had... she just starts driving. <laughs> yeah, we I mean wherever Abby took us somewhere I assume near the haven. Where we're going? I told them not to meet up with us. I told us to told them to call when it was time. Uh, well we'll text you then. Well, they call, it's time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, just a, a vegan coffee shop. No, just a regular coffee shop that has vegan options. Uh, so, sure. get the phone call. All right, wait, you brought The Haley? lean bean machine. Yeah! Hey! Yeah. Yeah. And we're back. Baby. <laughs> there it is. Um, so, you brought Haley? The sword wouldn't hurt, you know. Plus, she's Haley. Kind of oh, I am way more than just a sword. She brought the the holy water too, and I mean, she just kicks ass in general. So, I also remember helping you bring a friend back to life. So, also yeah, she... I'm right here. Also, she's right here. I'm I'm not. Hi. Upset. I was just wondering why. This is not my upset face. I know sometimes I have to clarify that. Um. Hello, Haley. It's nice to meet you. My name's Hector. I, sorry, I'm I'm really bad at that. Uh, Looking Hector, through the phone. It's Haley. Uh, Hello. I assume everyone's on speaker right now. <laughs> Hello. Uh, right. So, what's the plan? Please, someone. Coffee, and then. No. Uh, I can send. Hold on. I'm sending a picture now. Hold. I gotta attach it. To, do I email no, it no, or just, just attach it to the just to the desk right there? To do, no, okay. Just hit send. All right. It's Is he there. old? Okay. It's about fifty. Oh. Nephilim. Ah. Yeah. Sends the uh, sends the picture. Uh, I took these at the warehouse uh, that we found the the demons in. Looks like there are a couple of them. Um and a big hole in the wall glowing thing. it looked like a some sort of hell portal i mean hell being a construct of religious mythology yeah, demon really realm portal. hell yeah do we have any idea how to close this but it wasn't supposed to open right oh maybe if we break the wall Mm. I don't see the was, photo. The wall. I was actually problem. in the process of working on something very similar to this a few months back, and uh, I was seeking to open a portal to, um, to hell. No, no, to the Fey Realm. Oh, did yes. Rex told you tell you that we were there? Uh, no, I. That's actually a funny story about how, how Rex and I met. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, yes. So... Anyway, so I'm thinking that we could reverse the process. Uh, perhaps uh, all I need is some of my equipment that Rex helped me fix up uh, when that whole accident occurred. And um, well, we should be halfway to a solution. So can we confirm that this is a hell portal? I I'm, I just want to make sure that I, I I'm because I'm not an expert. That was just my guess. Raise your hand if your character 
went through the portal to the Fey Realm. No, but Gabby I could have. was not there. Victoria right. was there. <laughs> You're right. Well, you did say this character. Your character right now. Raise your hand if you went through the Fey portal. The two of you have seen something very similar to this. In the process of Selena opening the portal between the wilds and the realm. Not the end goal, but the the process. So magic types is the is the crack in the wall and is the portal bound to the wall? So like literally if we breaching charged around it, we could move the portal to wherever we wanted. Like took the whole section of wall with us. I don't I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's more about like the place. Mm. Like ripping a hole in that place, but I I don't know, I don't know, magic. Quantum wise, Doc? What do you think? Well, all a portal is is a uh, connection between two finite points. And so if point A was attached to something, it would not necessarily move point B, simply move the access point. Okay. That is was that a yes, sir? fairly intelligent, but your point was not... You didn't actually say anything at the end there. I answered the question. What was the question? I, I <laughs> thought I... Rob thought he answered the question. <laughs> it, 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 you were like... <laughs> you did. Technically, you did. You did. No, no, no. I think this you is... did answer the question. Why is Abby hitting me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, confused. Magically speaking, your dock's not far off. Point A to point B, it's not exactly a tunnel. Right. A physical tunnel, anyway. So if it is a portal, that's why when you open portals to a static place, you can open them wherever you want. You can end up in the same place. I think is what you were trying to say. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. You're brilliant. Are you a doctor? <laughs> no. Yes, Hector. Do you have more holy water? I have a question. Not for you. Uh, I don't know much about magic. Normally, people have to do magic. It doesn't happen a lot by accident in this world. Uh, is Do we think this is something that's always been in this warehouse or that they are making there? Pretty sure they're making it. But it so, might be a point that was you know, easily susceptible to this sort of thing. Okay. Uh, Sal, I believe last time we spoke, a hell mouth was mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, we have two problems, the way I see it. We got people in there, assuming demons, that we need to kill. And then we've got some sort of door thing, portal thing, that we need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Either way... I think we got to deal with the demons first. Right. And then we can get in there, look at the thing, figure out what to do with it after that. Um, that's that's very good, Hector. Thank you. Sally, when you good guys... Good plan, Chief. <laughs> uh, Sally and Rex, you guys both went through the Fey portal? Yeah. What did she do exactly to open it? She just took a long fucking time to do it. Okay. I, she also had she also had Travis's key. Oh, you guys okay. spent a lot of time surfing and riding roller coasters. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay, so You likely had a point a convergence point, like a that's what I was trying to triangulate when I was trying to open right. my portal. So you think you can reverse that if we give you enough time? Yes, I am 87% sure that I can. I like those odds. Okay. Uh, then why don't we work on that? Uh, 
Hector, Haley, we come up with uh, the the punchy sorty game plan. Uh, the magical folks. Uh, well, that's Haley too. Shit, Haley's got to be on two teams. Fuck. Uh, 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 oh, it's fine, love. I already am. Fair. Uh, we'll work on the sciency and the magic-y portions of closing it after we kill the demons? Right. I don't think there's much that we can do about that now. We just need to get... In and kill the demons. Well, yeah, we need to get in and kill the demons, but we do need the... whatever equipment you have. Hi, um... I'm sorry, what was your name again? Hinks. Hinks. Hinks, you got your stuff and your Winnie? Yes. Okay. Cool. Then let's go kill a demons. Yes, let's. Okay, all together at the same time, Hector. Right. I can describe to you what I saw in possible entry points. Okay. Hit them from three sides. All right. Okay, great. I knew working on a team was going to work out eventually. So, here's my thought. Roof access. I can get up there. Or Sal. Either way. Vents. Breach through there. There's back entrance as well. The big gates are padlocked, but there is a side entrance door. You could probably just push your way through. It's locked, but I don't think it was very stable. Uh, and then there's a main entry through the store itself. Uh... Probably also locked, but again, I can't imagine that it's locked very secure. We breach from those three points, converge on the demons, and okay. kill them. Right. Uh, Each the group takes a jug of holy water. Okay. And how are we going to kill the demons? Should we bind them first? Psh, hammer. <laughs> With this. Okay. You really can't do that in public, Hector. No, oh, soup goes away. <laughs> um, no, I mean like, can they? They can't blink away, right? We've determined that. We have not. Right. We hope. Well, we know that the other one couldn't do it, but I think maybe setting down a trap first, if um, if you can refine what you did before in the thing then we can use that but if it binds them and it freezes everyone else who goes in there then it's not going to be very helpful because when we start to thaw it then we can go in I'm fairly certain I've worked out what went wrong what was it I was hoping you wouldn't ask I will work out what went wrong and you do well, that in about 90 minutes. Yes. Can um, you make something that I could, like, drop on top of them? Because it, we can't really do a trap because they're already in there. Or unless we want them to leave and then come back to where the trap is. Oh, yeah. Like, demon demon, demon water balloon drop. Just... <sighs> of course, yes. From, from the, roof. The, the mechanism is the easy part. It was the ingredients that need a little bit of tweaking. All right. I will. Uh, it it hung to it, it stayed in the air too long. It needs to settle faster. Okay. Maybe that's adding... fine. I can alter the composition. Right. Maybe adding some alcohol to it will allow it to evaporate faster. Uh, Oof! Party. Of course, that is brilliant. And I'll get right to work. If you can do the chemistry doc, I can probably put the like re repurpose refactor one of my flashbangs to uh, to hold the aerosol, so Hector really? can huck it like a baseball. Let's get right to work. Um, so I'll just looks around at everyone like, I have really smart friends. Fuck. Sally, if Hector's I also may. doing the same from the other <laughs> end of the phone. <laughs> Sally, if I may, can I have a word with you real, real quick? Yeah. He'll What's pull up? you aside. Um, in the interest of research. Um, oh boy, what? If you... Whatever you end up doing to dispatch of these demons leaves... Remains... 
would you feel comfortable with saving me some? For research, for science. Just make sure I understand this properly, Doc. Um, you want me to save you some demon chunks? Yes, and or blood. I mean, if they're dead, they're dead. Like, I'm fine with that, I guess. Perfect. It, um... Why did you ask me specifically? Well, because you're half demon and I, I didn't want to disrespect your kind? Tell you what. They leave chunks? Go bananas. I leave chunks? Don't fucking touch. Got it? Understood. Consent oh. clear as day. Yeah. All right. Think of it like uh, being an organ donor. No one wants these organs. So can we go, you bunch of fucking nerds? Yeah. Rex and I will get to work. And we'll stay away. Sorry. As they leave, Rex tries to pull the M wrap around to go through the drive through to get actual coffee and then stops just inches short of the nine foot bar and then backs the, beep, 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 backs the M wrap up and then just goes over the little curb with the little bushes and stuff in the M wrap after she orders and then pulls around and jumps out, runs to the window and gets coffee. Oh. <laughs> gets back in. <laughs> drives away okay so plan order of operations fix the Hinks. machine yeah make it better make the machine better get in trap them kill them close the hell mouth okay well, then let's start with fixing the machine so we want to build a better demon trap. Science, science. I'm gonna do some science. So let's roll some weird science. Build a better demon trap. <laughs> Read on. Uh, All right. Uh, a plus weird. Science. Oh wait. Science. So, am I doing science or am I using my playbook move science? Oh, interesting. I don't know. She says you may create gadget here. I'll just do this. What is it? Science. <laughs> Tell her. Ooh, okay. Here I'm gonna tell you blah 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 blah. Okay. Okay. So this is essentially you can do weird science without rolling, but I get to pick what it do. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll let you choose. <laughs> oh boy. Would you like to roll weird science, or would you like to use your move science? Um, I mean, I think in the in the sense that Rex is helping me, I feel like it makes more sense to roll weird science. Okay. Perfect. I was gonna say, and I helped. And um. I helped. All right. Let's uh, let's do a roll. Let's roll plus weird. Ooh. All right. All right. So I got a nine. Opportunity to move it past that. Uh, Rex, if you would like, you may roll to help. We. And I helped. And you helped. <laughs> And you helped. Congratulations. You've all helped. All right. So it's time plus us. You pick two requirements from the list, uh, which would be it needs a rare or weird material. It won't be very reliable. It requires a huge amount of power or fuel. It will take a long time to get working. 
it won't work as you intended, or you'll need help beyond your team of hunters uh, to finish it. So you can pick two. Hmm. I have a move to take care of the rare requirement, or to try to take care of the rare uh, requirement. Okay. Yeah, because my choice is going to be rare weird material, and um, maybe it takes a bit to get it working. Okay. Like maybe we're we're a little bit down to the wire tweaking it. Okay. Uh, so you need a rare and or weird material, and it will take a long time to get working as you continue to develop this demon trap. Uh, what are you... So you had some weird stuff last time that you stole from a church. What are you changing, materials-wise? That makes uh, it weird. That makes it weird, I mm -hmm. think. What new weird thing do you need? Perhaps... Uh... <laughs> There was there was a lot of an angelic component to it. Um, mm -hmm. Sally, in our conversation, can I retroactively say that Hanks asked for a lock of your hair? And if not, he would have picked it off of your jacket. <laughs> I was gonna say for science. Um, for science. So let's do that little bit of the conversation. Yeah. Put that in the time break. Let's okay. go back. The time break. How do you ask for How do Sally's you hair? ask for Sally's hair? I'm I'm curious. One one more quick. Not Why do I think this is going to be an even weirder question? Okay. Well, what? it's not about your organs if it helps. Um I think that maybe a demonic component would be helpful in this trap. Okay. May I have a lock of your hair? Purely scientific, not romantic. I wasn't even going there until you said that, and now I think I might have to hit you. Please don't. Can he roll? <laughs> he can. To try to convince you? Yeah, I think he needs to. Uh, there's a move for that. Um, hey, Professor Hinks, yeah. please roll plus charm for me. Oh, this is exactly why I built him with minus one charm. Because <laughs> there is a whole section for another hunter. You've given them a reason and told them what you want to do. That's what a have big you rolled, old, sir? That's a big old five. Sally, uh -huh. it is up to you to decide how badly he has offended or annoyed you. And if you decide not to do what he asked, you may mark an experience. Oh, that's mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who wrote this book? Uh, Who the fuck? fucking wrote this book? Was it Who me? Because that's how I would have wrote it. <laughs> Look. Or for rule reference for everyone. If you if they do well, you can mark experience if you do what they ask, but. Look, I know you're new here, so you might not understand how this stuff works, okay? Here's the thing. You never ask that ever again, like ever. You got it? Understood. Everyone gets one. That's your one. All right. I I got I got battle plans to do. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go over here now. And she'll turn around to talk to Haley. <laughs> she turns around. pluck it off of her coat is what I'm assuming. Yes. <laughs> How subtle are you? As subtle as I can possibly be. I'm going to please roll to act under pressure. 
Oh, brother. Okay. Let's take a look at a... Uh, uh, plus cool. <laughs> would you think that this would result in fear? Because I never need to act under pressure to How? reason fear from any source. How afraid are you, Professor Hanks, not Rob, <laughs> of what Sally will do to you? If she feels you picking hair off of the back of her jacket. Hanks, as he is oblivious is, to danger. Is there fear there at all? I mean, on her back is literally, she's going to turn around and you just see this massive fucking hilt sticking out from underneath her coat. Hanks is less afraid of the consequences and more so concerned with not having to face the consequences if that makes sense it's not out of fear it's out of inconvenience i'll allow it great <laughs> rob's terrified <laughs> you pick some hair off of the back of sally's jacket which Haley sees you do and he just trots off she just kind of like raises an eyebrow she doesn't say anything uh, cool all right i think uh if the time break has concluded yes <laughs> he pulls out the hair and says i would um Greatly appreciate it if you did not tell Sally I have this, Miss Machina. Um, I'm going to pretend that you didn't show me that, and I don't know where you got that. Got what? Exactly. Perfect. Unfortunately, uh, if you attempt to lie in front of her, I'm going to tell on you because I'm a human lie detector oh fascinating try to lie to me well if I do it now you know it's a lie maybe so maybe you could tell me a truth falsely hmm I will think on testing this. Give it a shot, Doc. And she hands you parts of the flashbang. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've refactored the flashbang. We've set about re resciencing the demon trap. And what is everyone else doing? Because the science is taking much longer than you would like it to. Planning out who's going where. Who's going to drop a thing. Okay. Hector, once you see inside, can you just like bamf down there? Yes. Okay. So that'll just, that'll shave off some precious seconds, I feel like. So maybe you should be on the roof. Sounds good. Yeah. Either that or I just fall down and just kind of, you know intimidating land superhero landing totally up to you i mean if you think you can take that fall that's that's cool can you do that just like 40 feet i've fallen further huh see if i was doing that i would just i'd do like the slow fall thing like you know like jesus figure or like you know just slowly float down and just land very softly but that's just that's my thing i mean that's intimidating too true it's also incredibly ironic only a little bit yeah so roof roof front front, front door, door. Easy. Cool. All right. I've got my hammer too, which 
is holy, so it should work pretty Grammar. well. Yes. Some of the hammer. <laughs> oh my god, where did they find you? I sort of found them. Yeah, it was a, it was a thing. Lucky. You're now the... Yeah, never mind. Um... Cool, I got mine. I've got the, the, the water, so I'll just, I'll... Hey, I got gloves! I'm gonna need, I feel like I'm gonna need gloves holding this stuff. Do you want me to carry it? No, I feel like just each entrance should have some. It's just in case. You know? Oh, right. I just Do don't want to splash back. Is, are we still working with Father Donovan? Yes, but I asked her not to include him. Yeah, he's oh. sort of my boss. Right. I'm wondering if we could get holy oil from somewhere. That way we can make holy fire. I mean, I assume it's flammable. It's that kind of oil, not like olive oil. Oh, it's oh, you can use olive oil. Like generally, that. just olive oil when you're keeping it in a church. Oh. It's fire hazard. Right. Okay, never mind. Uh... Meta, meta question. Um, when you retired Abby, I took preparedness. Mm. You, does Abby still have preparedness? Mm -mm. Okay. Then uh, I will roll preparedness to see if I have some holy oil roaming around the vehicle. Okay. okay. Eight. Alright, uh, you have it, but not here, and it will take some time to get it. Yep. So you probably have some stored away. Yeah, Haven, maybe. It's up uh, to you if you want to take the time to yeah. go get cut it. To, cut to Travis cooking dinner. <laughs> and he's like, ah, oh, shit, I'm out of oil. <laughs> and then he finds it. <laughs> no. Not, not <laughs> canon, unless that you want it to be. <laughs> Some left. Strangely, his heartburn cleared right up after that for like a month. <laughs> Incredible. Oh my gosh. I must be allergic to pesto, you know. <laughs> Alright, so uh, we're coming to the end of prep time. Um, it has been a long while and some of you are getting very very antsy um rex do you go. want to take the time to go try to procure your holy oil uh, uh, go? rexy offers it up to abs um no i think we should strike soon and i shouldn't go at first why I mean, like, you're not going to be first in. Like, that's that's us, but... No, I... Tracking um, glyph. Right. Got a glyph from that thing that we did so they could track me easily. So, yeah, you guys should go in first and then I'll drive up. Do you think they're just tracking your hand, or...? If they are just tracking my hand, what do you suggest, Hector? Uh, it's just a thought. If you want to be there. I've been working on a prosthetic. Nope. No, nope, we're not having this discussion. Not going there. Mm -mm. Not going there. Fair enough. All right. I figured I'd offer. I, I like the new ones. Thank Human you. Humanism is a growing movement. Okay. Well, let's get going then. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm putting a lightning gun. I in. miss when. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you prepare and take your newly constructed demon trap and you head sans Abbey with Haley in tow towards the warehouse. Um, that is where we're going to take our break today because you guys did a lot more preparation than I was expecting and good for you. 
Uh, so thanks everybody for hanging out with us uh, so far. We will be back in just a quick few minutes. We're going to refresh our drinks and snacks and selves. And when we get back, uh, this thing's going to pop off. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon. And welcome back, Internet. Thank you for hanging out with us during our break. Uh, we are going to hop back in uh, where we left off, which is with everyone getting set up for whatever this is about to be. So, Haley is going in the front door. Holy water in hand. Sally's going in the back. Hector is heading up to the roof. The other three of you, what are you doing? Abby is away. Yep. Uh, in wait. Doc, you feel like battering through the big door there? I mean, I in, the, in the vehicle. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rexy saw the, like, perplexed, like, how would I batter through that door? Hmm. You know, <laughs> the thought process of you trying to melt the door with a laser or whatever. <laughs> Rexy could see that formulating. And then I, that's right. She's like, in I'm, the I'm, vehicle. With the vehicle. <laughs> I'm unsure what you're asking me. And this is Rob speaking. <laughs> uh, well, that's a, that's, a, that's why I, I pushed it along. Like I said, I would assume that the doctor was formulating how he could phase through the door or blow down the door or something and so rex no, what just... door that's what i'm no, asking. the the dock the big 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 door there there's a there's a huge like warehouse door i thought you meant me the dock i know and that's what oh oh batter through the dock uh you gotcha no the... I was like, the dock i was like i know that's me i'm the dock what are you asking what door <laughs> I understand. Who's on it. first? Yeah, it's yeah, like eleven. It's like eleven thirty at night for you. I get it. I get no, it. No, <laughs> I'm that stupid in the middle of the day. I don't blame the time zone. That's all that's right. We we love you, Rob. It's okay. Um, uh, batter through the door, the dock door, the bay, the 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 receiving area of the warehouse, the loading bay. Yes. Is this being asked of me? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. so the doc is being asked about the doc. Copy. Yes. Yes. Cool. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um. Well, I had thought that the um. The nephilim was going up to the roof. Yeah. But Are once, we once they three point assault, we'll just come in like the cavalry. Ah, well, in that case, it's very rudimentary. I mean. You know, I could use, um, do we want a quiet approach? Do we want a loud approach? Because the laser cannon uh, is quiet, but about, also it's a laser cannon. How about I use the MRAP, the derp mobile, to crash through the door, and then you jump out with the laser and blast whoever needs blasting. I love this. Yes. Let's so we wait <laughs> for the for the rest of them. So you wait. Yeah, we okay. wait. We wait for the uh, for for the A team. Okay. So Hector on the roof, Sally at the back door, Haley moving in through the office building. Who's saying go? I think we're listening for Hector to drop the the device. The device. Okay. Hector, up from the roof, uh, you look in through the vents again, and you see a similar situation to what you saw before, um, except there is an added person 
in here now. Um, you see, sitting in the center of the room, in an old office chair, a figure, and then milling around the room, three other people. So one more than before. Mm -hmm. oh, one more won't be that bad. Uh, is going to can this device that I have? Is, do I have a good angle where I can like through the grate here, kind of bend it open a little bit, pitch it inside? How big is this device, Professor? Uh, well, this this was re essentially a retooled flashbang, yeah. Okay, so it's fine. So, yeah. palm of your hand, compact version. Grenade version size. 1.0 is huge. Version 2.0, palm of your hand. Okay. Um, uh, yes, you could do this thing. Okay. Uh, and so Hector, actually, is, is this great? What I'm picturing here is something that. Hector could lift uh, or like open up just a little bit, like like tweaking the like flaps of it to get a, kind of part of an arm through, and then pitch the uh, the fat the the flashbang the flashbang demon trap uh, inside, okay. trying to get it towards like the center where the person in the chair is. Hopefully, it might spread out enough to get the people that are moving around the outside. Certainly. Uh, I am going to have you roll to act under pressure. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Not not too bad. Uh, that's an eight. Okay. Uh, where's that on our choice of price to pay? Hector, mm -hmm. you uh, wedge the grate partially open uh, enough to fit uh, part of your forearm in uh, and click whatever it is on the device you need to click. I'm sure they explained it to you um, in, in simple terms, probably just a button to press, and you drop the flashbang. Uh, as it starts to fall, you watch it, and it is heading pretty center, almost directly sort of at an angle towards the uh, the person that is sitting in this office chair. Um, you focus in, you watch it as it is falling. It gets about halfway down, and you look up briefly to see this person that is sitting in the chair as they look up at you. And you can see that they are tied to the chair. You can let it fall. Or you can intervene. Hector will intervene. Uh, seeing that in that flash moment, uh, realizing that this probably isn't our target, uh, Hector is going to, using his angel wings, reappear underneath where the, like right next to the chair where the flashbang is, uh, and is essentially going to. <laughs> is going to use their hammer like a bit like a like a badminton racket and try to uh launch the uh the grenade at one of the other people at the edge of the room okay okay that is what you do then that's mm -hmm. the choice you have made uh hector you uh appear right in front of this uh this person that is stuck in this office chair um, and just as you hear somebody start to react you summon the hammer and wham uh, impacting the flashbang and sending it sort of flying back 
towards the uh, the furthest target from you, the person who is sort of standing towards the back of the room uh, near this crack, this glowing crack in the wall. Um, as the hammer impacts, it makes it about halfway there, and everyone hears this large explosion sound. Um, everything goes white in the room for a moment and Hector you can sort of feel the impact you hear sort of the skidding of this office chair as it is pushed towards you and sort of knocks into your legs um, there is yelling and uh, and a little bit of the screaming and confusion that um, Sally you can hear from outside um, Haley will react to this as well as she is pretty combat trained um, and Hector, as everything sort of settles in front of your eyes, you can see the other two standing figures kind of uh, kind of blinking. They were not hit directly. They are currently moving a little slowly, uh, trying to get to you. The one in the back of the room is frozen in place. Going in. As Sally busts in from the back door. Haley comes in through the front. Swords drawn. Uh, Hector, you're in the center of the room with this person uh, tied down, sort of arms uh, tied with rope to each arm of this office chair. Um, it is a young woman, sort of long blonde hair braided down one side, um, looking, she's uh, young, maybe Abby's age, a little bit older. Um, looking terrified up at you um, as she's just seen essentially Thor fly in and from the roof and save her from a grenade. Um, she looks terrified uh, and just is sort of looking up at you trying to figure out what is going on. Um, as you hear almost simultaneously two uh, metal doors from either side of the warehouse flying open um, from one end, Sally uh, coming running in from the other end, Haley not moving near as fast, but still very <laughs> athletic and competent. Um, I can't believe you guys are even a fucking NPC in this fight. Um, Sorry. So y'all are responsible if anything happens to her. Um, H Hector, you've just done the grenade. Sally, you are gonna get there first. The one in the back of the room is sort of frozen in place, uh, but there are two other figures that are sort of moving in on Hector. They are, even if they hadn't got the sort of residual from the grenade, they're not moving as fast as you are. So, uh, just keep an eye on Frozen Dude, but I'm gonna go after the ones that are actually moving. Alright, uh, so you head for the closest one? Uh, yep. Run at them. So that is my plus one ongoing, Sid. Remember, this is ongoing, not just forward. All ongoing. of them. It goes uh, on. It goes on and on. Uh, Alright, so... Let's hit uh, some shit. Let's kick some ass. All right. That is a 13. Okay, I think you have the advanced one, right? Oh, yeah. Um, All right. So... You inflict and suffer harm as normal, and then you pick from the 12 plus list, please. Uh, I'm gonna inflict double harm. Uh, okay. So that would be a five, so that's a 10. Okay. Uh, is this with the sword? Yep. Or the spear? Or the, what the fuck do you- you have so many things. I have a lot. Uh, this is the spear. This is the spear. Okay, so you, uh, Hector, you see Sally with preternatural speed, uh, kick in the door and come running at one of these assumedly demons. So um, like, poke and throw. <laughs> <laughs> making their way towards you. She draws the spear from her back um, and uh, as the door is kicked open, this uh, this man that you see sort of wheels around to face you, Sal, just as you sort of drive the spear into his side um, through and through, all the way through to the other side. 
Um, he cries out in pain, and then you see his eyes sort of flash uh, this dark, almost black, sort of like red, this like very, very dark sort of burgundy color sort of covering the entire eye, and he sort of growls at you. It's about fucking time you showed up. Uh, he grabs onto the spear, and you see this like uh, this dark energy, the same color as his eyes start to circle the haft of the spear, making its way towards you, snaking up your arm, and you are also gonna take five harm. Ooh, okay. Is that after armor, like? That is after armor. So I take a full five, or I can take armor toward it. I'm confused. Uh, no, this goes through your armor. Oh, shit. Okay. Hoof ta! As you feel this energy, um, Sally, snake up your arm. It is like the the jacket and everything you are wearing and even the sort of like extra toughness of your skin doesn't make a difference it is almost like your blood is starting to boil as he holds on to the haft of the spear sort of looking at you I mean he also looks like dog shit <laughs> um, but uh, it hurt a lot. Um, and you see Haley from the other side of the room sort of making her way uh, towards the other uh, entity in the room, the one that is not frozen, um, and they are sort of locked in combat as he has sort of reached around and pulled out a couple of knives, um, and they are sort of sparring back and forth. Outside crew. Are you waiting? I mean, it was go time, so. Yeah, I think as soon as we hear the explosion, oh, <laughs> yeah. Hank looks at Rex, just <laughs> punch it. <Yeah. laughs> and it rips forward. Uh, she blares the horn, which is the the THX uh, light uh, light and sound studio of uh, Star Wars. That that noise and then it's it's the door okay smash into one of the large dock doors but not the dock just the doors on the dock uh, i'm gonna have you roll to act under pressure that's cool yes the coolest Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. What you got? A seven. Seven. Okay. Price. Price to pay. Uh, you do so. You gun it. You blare the horn. You smash through the loading dock. Um, the door is a much heavier metal than you were expecting, um, and though it does give way, you hear a loud crunch coming from the front of the, uh, of the truck, of the mobile, um, and it starts to, as soon as you sort of make it through, it starts to cut, uh, very hard to one side as one of your, uh, tires has gone and the front of the uh, the truck is sort of crunched in but you're through <laughs> and you're in you're a little squirrely the rest uh, of you the truck comes driving through one of the loading dock doors <laughs> tweet is that um abby you're still waiting I would think that Abby's like, uh, well, I feel like she's on her way there. Like, she just kind of gave them time. And uh, if someone texted the go, I think she'd like pick up the pace uh, so that she could get there soon ish. I mean, soon, uh, as soon as she can. But like, 
she didn't want to be in the warehouse district when basically so right she'll, to uh, give it away. yeah she'll uh use the override that ajax uh, gave her for the the tesla to break the law <laughs> okay and you start gunning it as safely as abby would towards the warehouse uh let's get around to well uh professor you've just been jostled around quite a bit would you like to do anything <laughs> as I would the truck like is to... driven into the warehouse i'd like to jump out of the truck uh okay laser cannon in hand and uh do i see any what i would deem to be enemies in my immediate vicinity <laughs> Uh, you do. You can see sort of from where you are across the the warehouse, um, Sally in very... You can see a couple. Sally in very close proximity to uh, another uh, person who has a spear currently sort of driven through him. Um, you can also see sort of across from them, Haley sort of locked in a blade-to-blade -blade combat. Is there anybody else that is not currently engaged with one of my allies that is like closer to me? Frozen no? dude. So he's the one in the back by the crack in the wall is frozen solid. Not even worried about that because my trap works so well. And then there is someone tied to an office chair in the center of the room by Hector. They're probably not an anime. Um Okay. Dealer's um, choice. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fire at locked in combat with Haley. Pew pew pew. I would like you to roll to kick some ass. Pew 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 pew. pew. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Eleven D. Eleven D. You and whatever you're fighting inflict harm on each other. Okay. Uh, 10 plus, you choose one extra effect. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Dude, what are the he's, odds? He's, he's a, he's a, he's a soft boy. Maybe take less harm. J nah, just, just disintegrate him easy. Uh, no, let me see. Um, hmm. <laughs> I... Gain the advantage. I'll okay. take plus one forward. Okay, so you have plus one on your next roll. How much harm does the laser cannon do? Two. Two. All right, so uh, you... How's this boy going to get to you? You uh, leap heroically out of the vehicle, um, taking aim at the uh, the demon that Haley is locked in combat with, and you take aim expertly and fire a laser <laughs> across said warehouse. Um, it impacts the uh, the side of this this man uh, that Haley is currently fighting, um, hitting him sort of right in the uh, shoulder, knocking one of the knives out of his hand. Um, as you do so, he uh, throws up his other hand to block a blow from Haley, and you see his head sort of snap over in your direction. Uh, and with uh, a speed that you have rarely seen a creature move at, he uh, disentangles himself from Haley and all but all but appears, all but teleports uh, in front of you and grabs you by the throat. Um, starts to uh, squeeze as you've just shot him with a laser. Um, you're gonna take two harm. Professor Hinks, um, minus whatever armor you may have. As he grabs onto you and Haley, realizing what has happened, gives chase. Um, Abby is on her way. Hector, <laughs> chaos has ensued. Oh boy. Sal's not looking good. No. 
and the professor has been grabbed. But she's she's stabbed through the guy in front of her, but he... Yes. Okay. But he's, like, okay about it, or, like, chill, or what's his... I mean, he's bleeding. Okay. I think she said dog shit was the word, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see him from the back. He's got a, he's got a spear through his... All the way through him. Yeah, and heck, and uh, and Haley is heading towards the one that now has the professor. Has, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try to help Sal because she looks like she's in pain, and hopefully Haley can help Hanks. Uh, so yeah, Hector just looks down at the woman tied up at the chair and says, "You're gonna be okay. Be right back." Uh, and uh, wait. teleports uh, right next on, on the, essentially on the other side of the uh, of the demon that Sal has impaled uh, and is just going to try to whack him upside the side of the head with the hammer okay please roll to kick some ass alright I did up this with my last level up uh, so my tough is now three Nice. That is a 10. It's hey. a good thing I did that. Y'all are rolling real good. All right. Uh, so, same. You inflict uh, armor on each other, and you pick one extra effect. And I am going to pick... Oh, boy. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to pick to inflict terrible harm. Okay. Um, that might so be that'll be... Useful. That's going to be four harm, uh, hand stun, holy. Holy? Mm hmm. Yeah, that's it for this fool. Um, you hit him in the head? Yeah. Uh, Sal, you are covered with a spray of blood as Hector appears uh, behind this man, um, pulls the. Oh, no, you already had the hammer out. Um, yeah. Sort of wings back with the hammer and swings as hard as he can. And this head that was attached to a body in front of you is gone. There's not a thud. You don't see where it went. A lot of it's all over you. And Hector, some of it's on you too. Uh, as the body that is now attached to the spear sort of wobbles and kind of falls forward. You holding the spear, holding it up. Take a little off. <laughs> Pull the spear out of him. Uh, Thanks. Whew. That felt good. You all right? Great. I'm going to go help that. the doc. Yeah. Good idea. I'll take out the frozen one. Uh, Sally, the body falls to the floor, and you see that same sort of dark uh, red, almost black energy kind of coalesce around it for a moment and kind of spiral out of the wound that you left, and then just kind of dissipate into the floor. Did you see that? Huh? Put the spear down and maybe just pull out the iron big ass sword. Cause that was freaky. You alright? Uh, weird shit. Don't like it. Uh I'm gonna go take care of that one. Okay. Alright, you take off towards the frozen one. Um Hector, you take off towards the professor, uh just as Haley is getting there um abby i imagine you are pulling up outside at this point well there's a big opening now right <laughs> oh there's many openings uh -huh. the front door is open the back door is open the one of the loading dock doors is busted open uh -huh. she'll probably just like pull the tesla like the tesla screeches to a stop like so that the front of it is kind of blocking the well i mean it's a big door but like the the bay door the dock door um, and she kind of just hops out. Okay. And Abby arrives on the scene to this. Um. Okay. Um. Would you like to intervene? Uh, yeah. Abby's going to move over to, um, Sal looks really rough, right? Oh, yes. 
uh, she's going to uh, head over to, to Sally and uh, she kind of like does like a, 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 a run uh, as much as Abby can and she like grabs Sally's arm and uh, pra- places her hand uh, and I'm going to use one of my moves which is this might sting um, okay. I'm going to use magic to heal three harm um, so hopefully this works well Okay. If, my, if Muse Magic was the last thing I used, and I get a plus one forward, even even though I was already having a plus one forward, do I still get the plus one forward? You only get plus one forward once. Okay. It is once a one-time per... thing. It is not ongoing. So you use right. Magic, the next roll you make, it's a plus one. That's right. it. It's just the next one. Right. But I used Magic last. So it would be a, another plus one because I you haven't rolled since then. Correct. All right. So yeah, you get a plus one. Cool. So I'm going to roll. Oh shit, Abby. It's level sixes. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So it works. Uh, it's painful. Is is the tag? <laughs> it's painful. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, it's do, exceptionally do, 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 painful. Thing. The process is exceptionally painful. Ooh, on a seven to nine, it also leaves a gnarly scar. Okay, so uh, this night sting use magic to heal three harm. Sally, uh, Abby lays a hand on you, and uh, you don't have any. Abby, you look her over, and you can tell she is pale and sunken, and she looks like she usually does when she's sort of been through hell. Um, She doesn't have any physical wounds. Mm -hmm. Um, So you lay a hand on her and heal the three harm. Um, Sally, you can heal the three harm uh, and the pain brings you to your knees. Um, You feel that same sort of sensation, like almost like the blood in your body is heating up um, and you can look down and start to see like red splotches on your skin Um, and you for a moment are going to be out of commission because of the pain I think flavor wise it's her it's Abby sending the body physically back in time so that it heals whatever it was Mm -hmm. okay so sending the body back in time not not like not not literally but yeah. reversing the process yeah. meaning sally you are going through the same pain again yeah ow and it hurts like hell i'm sorry five harm worth pain. ow 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 don't kill anyone uh, i didn't hector okay. did that one okay there's a body right in front of her that's missing a head. Okay. That was Hector. I helped, but I didn't kill him. Okay. Try not to... Just... Don't die. <laughs> she scoots over to the hell mouth. Okay. Uh, let us see. Uh, Professor Hinks, you're being grabbed. By the, th- by the throat. By man. Uh, yeah. Haley and Hector are both making their way to you. Um, would you like to <laughs> do, react to do something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think when he got grabbed, he, um, he, he dropped the laser cannon. Um, sure. And uh, upon dropping it, like as, as he dropped it, he, he released the batteries to it effectively. So he drops it and it's inert on the ground, powering down whatever. And I think he's struggling with like one arm, but like his other arm, he's reaching into his jacket pocket and he pulls out the lightning gun (laughs) and holds it up to the dude's head and just fires. Okay. (laughs) Let's go ahead and roll a kick some ass. Oh my God, I love this guy. It's a seven. Of, uh, my plus one's not gonna save me there. Uh, whack. Uh, wait. 
that's not that's not a failure, right? That's a partial. No, that is a partial success. I'll keep that is seven then. By the skin of your teeth, a partial success. Um, okay. So you and whatever you're fighting inflict harm on each other. How much harm lightning gun do? <laughs> you already hit Three. him with a laser. All right. Uh, you uh, pull very quickly the lightning gun up to um, this person's head and fire uh, the lightning sort of zapping into him, uh, sending him reeling um, rather than letting you go. However, his muscles tense and he tightens his grip around your throat, um, sort of digging uh, what you can feel now, nails that are extending out of his hand, much as uh, Sally's did, sort of into the uh, the skin and the muscles there. Um, you're going to take two harm that will ignore your armor. Ow. If, if you have any. Oh, I got armor. I got prepared, armor. I prepared to do stupid shit like this. But not on your neck. But uh, no. yeah, demon nails in your neck. That's gonna get past that. No. So two, two harm for you, um, Rex. You're nearby. Yeah. So Re Rex, once the the truck stopped, right, and the doc jumped out one way, Rex hits the latch on on their door and kicks it open to like draw enemies to look at it but goes out the dock's door so, so like this big six inch door swings open but Rexy sneaks out the other side and uh, I guess since it's close quarters um, I guess we'll um, she rolls out of the truck she pulls out her uh, her little twin silver bars with the uh, wire saw between it Garrett flicks it and wings it tries to wing it around the the uh, demon's head to give it a snap okay this is the one that has professor yeah okay uh great roll to kick some ass right y'all are really kicking ass all right you inflict harm on each other with a seven um yes so you do so you sort of wing the uh the wire out and try to uh get around its neck you accomplish this you catch uh the other side and you start to pull uh how much harm do you do y'all and knocking off heads are it's kind of a thing taking off heads and pulling fire alarms it's uh intimate close and it does two okay uh yeah you uh you pull and you feel it catch um as it does you can see uh professor this happening um and you see blood start to uh, fall from the neck of this person their grip on you professor hinks lessons just a little bit um, as you see their other hand reach up and grab their own throat connecting with the wire and Rex coming back towards your hands uh, which you see very very quickly because you're very very close um, this sort of dark energy kind of spiraling down connecting with your hands and your skin starts to burn um, you are going to take two harm ignore armor From the demon magic as you do this uh hector you're over there you see rex ninja style throw a garrot around this person's neck and start to pull okay so hector or so uh i'm getting rex kind of hanging on behind with the grow and okay uh then what Hector is going to do is kind of goes rushing up um, sort of slides down on one knee and sweeps across the front of their legs with the hammer um, trying to get them to knock down and then just goes for one more strike to the chest uh, with the uh, uh, just with the, the, the business end of it okay the hammer end uh, roll to kick some ass all right That's a 12. Okay, so you inflict harm on each other. 
you get extra thing. Uh, what extra once, thing? Once again, going to go for the terrible harm to add plus one. Okay, how much you got? Uh, so that'll be four and holy. Yeah, that's going to be it for this four fool harm as done well. Holy. Okay, so uh, you both, uh, Rex and Professor Hinks, see Hector sort of knee slide over, uh, knocking the legs out from under this person. Um, either Rex pulling you down with him or letting go. You can decide. <laughs> Would you like to let go? I think that the burning, uh, Rexy's fingerless gloves, her her flesh is actually like burnt to it and okay. as it pulls away she like <gasps> goes with it <laughs> okay and, and so she's laying on the floor with it still trying to saw through its neck okay so <laughs> taking both of them down um professor hinks they uh this uh this man sort of is ripped away from you as he and rex both crash to the ground and hector uh wheels the hammer around one more time with a strike to the chest and you can just sort of see the chest cavity kind of cave in um and you see uh sort of out of the uh the mouth of this person this same dark energy rex that you saw um sort of take over your hands for a moment sort of snake out almost like smoke and then settle into the ground um hinks uh removes two sample bottles from his uh his jacket one of which he is going to attempt to gather this dark energy in uh okay uh roll me to act under pressure it's moving very fast and also you don't know what to do great uh what is that cool yes not so cool that's a six you uh, reach down and attempt to uh, catch some of this whatever it is in a vial. Um, the the vial itself kind of just passes through what little is left as it's kind of settling into the floor. Um, but you feel sort of as your hand touches it, this like burning sensation. Um, you would take one harm. Would my armor. gloves? Would my would my gloves make a difference or no? Because he's in like big. Uh, old... yeah, you got gloves on, so I'll say it would be. Yeah, we'll count that as armor. Your science gloves. Okay. So nice. it would just be one. Um, yeah, they're armor, like they're it. like those like you're allowed to handle really freaking yeah. dangerous chemical like big rubber gloves. That's fair. Uh, uh, so yeah, you can negate the harm, but you don't get. Yeah. Anything from he'll it. he'll just sort of curse under his breath and uh and take the second sample bottle and uh sample some of his blood that's pouring from his neck uh this you can do yeah there's quite a lot of it uh as rex has made quite the impact on his skin and the things under it um to oh i'm sorry my neck oh your neck but also even, his that, neck. even easier yeah i'll you know what then i'll use a third sample bottle for his neck. I didn't even think about that. Well, there you go. You can do both. Great. Hector, you see Professor Hinks taking blood samples from himself and from the man you have just crushed his entire chest cavity in. Maybe not the best time for that, Doc. <coughs> he ignores you. <laughs> he ignores okay. you. Sally, you go for the back of the room um, where Abby has turned her attention to the crack in the wall. Um, the frozen figure is sort of there starting to get a little bit of movement back, but obviously you make it to them before this happens because what a good trap you all have set up. Uh, what do you, what would you like to do? Abby just said I shouldn't kill him. Okay. Abby, can you do a thingy? Yes. Just trap him so he can't move? Oh, yeah. You want to try to trap him? Yes, can I go? Yeah, certainly. Sure. Uh, On Abby, guard. 
Um, There's no initiative here. I just call on people. <laughs> uh, Abby is going to uh, pull out a... Um, she's going to pull out a collar made of cog wheels from her bag. Okay. She is going to attempt to trap using magic. Okay. Hit me with a use magic roll. Okay. Um, I will say... I've been rolling really well, and this is where the shoe falls. Don't oh, jinx no, it I like guess that. not. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, so I had when... to jinx it like that. <laughs> so it's <laughs> going to roll terribly. A nine. Um, so you can trap him, but you will pick a glitch, please. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take a harm. Okay. What does that look like? Uh, so Abby, uh, moves this claps this thing around their neck uh and locks it and then she'll she's gonna like bite her finger and uh smear it across the the closing mechanism and uh the the gears on it start to turn uh so that it it starts to function and okay uh so collar around his neck um you turn your attention back to the crack on the wall uh, and start to analyze what is going on there um, with Hector and the professor on one and Rex all on one side of the room. Uh, you all hear uh, as this starts to wind down uh, from the uh sort of from the center of the room sally as you turn back to uh survey the rest of the room you get about halfway turned around to see uh to check in on your friends to make sure everyone is still okay and you all hear sort of from the center of the room Haley shout uh, she shouts one word and it is Sally's name Sally in your back you feel this horrible stabbing sensation and a burning as through your back and protruding from your chest is a large, dark, red spike. You all turn as you hear Haley shout. Standing behind Sally is a woman. About the same height as her, maybe an inch taller. Uh, long blonde braid. Hector, you saw her a few minutes ago. Sitting in a chair in the center of the room. And her arm at the elbow has transformed into this long spike that is now through Sally. Sally, you feel that sensation again as your blood starts to boil. And you felt this once before. Well, a couple of times before. Anytime anything has affected your demon side, it fucking burns. You are going to take five harm. Ignore her. I took a new move called Berserk. Okay. Which is literally the only thing keeping me up right now because I'm at eight. Okay. I think that is the one that keeps you alive until the end of the fight. Okay. Yep. So, you all hear Haley shout and you turn and see towards the back of the room near Abby and this frozen gentleman this woman, having run your friend through, 
with a spike. What do you do? Uh, Hector immediately reacts um, and is instantly uh, next to the uh, to the woman with with anger and uh, probably some guilt uh, burning in his chest and he just tries to lay her out once again with the hammer okay go ahead and roll kicks mess okay <sighs> fuck it's a six the six uh with a six i believe you get your ass kicked instead and yeah. do not inflict any harm hector uh you appear next to her and try to lay her out um as you do with her other hand she reaches up and catches your arm mid swing and you see this very very faint sort of red glow come from her hand and there is a blast of energy and you all see Hector go flying across the room slamming into the wall leaving a quite a dent in the concrete um, Hector you are going to take three harm uh, ignore armor or uh, one of them is armor piercing the other two can are from the wall okay I would only take one then anyway okay um, so just so... take one okay uh, she sort of looks around at the rest of you anyone else want to try Sal gets up in a scream, grabs the spear, and runs her through the middle. Okay. She is behind you. Can I can I do one of these? Like <sighs> over top? You can yep. certainly try. Cool. Go ahead and roll the kick some ass. <sighs> that was a 14. That is a 14. All right. So you're going to do her some harm. She's going to do you some harm. Yep. And uh, you do something from the, from the big list. Uh, Double. So she's taking 10. Okay. And she's going to inflict harm on you. However, you do not have any more ticks nope. harm to take. So that is going to take a different form. You, uh, with a scream of rage, take the spear with both hands and drive it back over your shoulder and down with just all the force you can muster into hers. Um, and matching Sally's volume, she screams in pain. Um, the spike sally that is still through your chest burns red hot she withdraws and sort of stumbles back there is a huge sort of gaping hole in sally's abdomen where things should be um and blood is starting to pour out everywhere you can As... also see um, the veins on the sides of Sally's neck are starting to turn that same sort of dark reddish black color on her neck up to her temples on her arms as she stands there. As soon as the two of them are separated... I would like to use my engineering skill. Okay. Uh, here it is. The battery that I ejected from my laser cannon, 
I would like to pick it up very quickly rig it to blow uh, and run up to this other person sure demon general nightmare fuel uh, and shove it where the spear went okay uh, go ahead and roll for me what is it plus sharp to do the thing hell yeah you do the thing 13 Okay, I'm gonna give you this. Uh, Professor Hanks, you, without even having to think about it, it's like muscle memory. Uh, you rig this to blow, moving a couple of wires ag- around, and you take off towards uh, the, uh, the blonde haired woman that is standing behind Sally. Uh, as she stumbles back from Sally after she has issued this threat, uh, who was even there sally you didn't see her because she's behind you abby and rex you recognize this face this is a person you have not seen for quite some time um probably since halloween this is emily fisher One of the baby witches that you dispersed. Or the face of her, anyway. You realize this, I think, the two of you. As Professor Hinks runs toward her, shoves this device into the large... Uh, hole in her shoulder left by the spear tip and I assume ducks for cover oh yeah gets uh, as close to Sally as he can Uh, not sure if he can help her but is going to try okay Uh, so you run for Sally as there is a small explosion from behind you rocking the center of the room uh, as everything clears and you uh, all blink after a second um, you see this form uh, this this person of those of you who know her as Emily uh, sort of chest and arm gone this side just gone don't know where it is Uh, part of her jaw sort of missing um, as she kind of stumbles back and uh, anybody that is still looking at her you can see uh, her eyes sort of go that like dark red for a second um, and the voice which you did not recognize says guess I'll be seeing you soon and she falls. Professor Hinks, by the time you've made it to Sally, the fight is over. Sally, you are on the ground. Unmoving. Unable to breathe. A whole sort of dinner plate sized in your abdomen as the world starts to go black. Can I do a thing? Depends on what the thing is. Could I uh, heal her? You can try. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna do the this might sting again because it's the biggest thing I got. Um, so Abby's gonna run over and um, adjust her watch over um, Sally and hopefully do something. Rexy slides in and like raise, you know, you can hear the the triage stuff just kind of pouring out of her. Raise her head. She's in shock. No, Sal. No, 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 no. You know, like holding her head in her lap. 
So I'm gonna heal three, but it leaves a gnarly scar. <gasps> You're gonna match win. <laughs> yeah. Abby, you channel the magic into Sally. Sally, you don't feel the pain. Um, Abby, you can see the edges of the huge hole that's essentially been blown out uh, of Sally. The skin start to form over the edges. It can't cover the whole thing and it can't regrow what's missing. Rex. You have enough medical training to know. Re Rexy just kind of like, you know, puts her head on, on Sal's and it's just like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You know. Can she say one last thing? Yeah. There is one sort of final, like, gasp as Abby funnels this magic into Sally trying to keep her alive. Worth it. And she lets out that final gasp. And Sally's head falls back to concrete. And she doesn't blink again. Rex, as you put your forehead to hers, you start to feel something strange happening to Sally's skin. And you all watch, Rex, as you look up to see what's happening. You see Sally start to glow. This sort of deep red. And Rex, you start to feel a heat coming off of her. She starts to almost disintegrate in front of you. Her hands and everything sort of falling away. Her skin turning to ash. Still trying to like hold her head in the in in uh Rex's lap, you know, as she's fading out, you know, she she's trying to hold the pieces together just by will. She looks up and just tears like at the magic people like <laughs> can do something she, she can't say it but you know there's that pleading in her uh, in her eyes you know trying to hold the bits together that that are left you watch as sally turns to ash underneath her jeans and her boots her tank top her leather jacket and she's gone there's nothing of her left except sort of a pile. And then that pile continues to almost take itself apart until what's left of Sally is this sort of swirling blackish red smoke like the others that settles into the concrete floor and disappears. Abby just looks kind of like in shock at like the scene before her. And uh, I think she's going to, did you say her clothes were left behind? Her clothes are there, uh, her knives and everything and her sword is there the spear is gone okay um i think abby's going to like not say anything and like just stand up 
and move over to the other demon that's locked. And she's gonna like grab them by the back of the collar and start dragging them over to the Tesla. Okay, you can do that. Takes a little bit of effort, but adrenaline's a hell of a drug. The rest of you? There's, there's still the portal there, right? Mm-hmm. Rex, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess Rexy reaches down and grabs Sal's sword and draws her gun and races towards the portal, just heading right for it. Oh, like, no, uh, Naruto, but like, ninja scroll style. You know, sword out, gun out. Okay. Uh, you pick up the big fuck-off sword, which is taller than you. Draw your gun and run for the wall where this crack is. You can feel the heat coming off of it, and Rex, you hit a wall. You can't go through. Uh, stupidly, she just starts firing and smashing the sword into the, when the bullets are gone, drops the gun and just starts hacking at the wall with the, the big sword. Uh, when, when she is like full, it seems to have like gotten to that point of exhaustion and it, that like just it feels... doesn't take long the sword is yeah massive she just feels a hand a very big hand on her shoulder uh and says we'll find her and uh she just kind of slumps down the wall like and the sword kind of clatters and she's just staring at nothing <laughs> professor anything I think uh, he was studying the spot where she disappeared uh, and then when Rex ran over and started attacking the wall and then Hector went to comfort her I think he just sort of walked over and, and bowed his head and just you know if anybody needed him to do anything he was at the ready but he doesn't really say anything okay so Abby drags slowly but surely the, the dead weight of this uh, this third collared demon to the Tesla. You get him in the back. She's gonna pick up the phone and she's gonna call. Um, I guess she wouldn't call Ajax, but she would call her contact at his um, organization mm -hmm. and let them know that she has a trapped demon that needs to be contained but not killed okay uh, you get that message out and they very briefly understood uh, they give you a uh, meetup point that they would use cycling through dead drops things like that um, that you can uh, can meet them at how I feel like it'd be irresponsible to just send him there and not have her go with them. How do, how, um, uh, this, this, what I've done to him, do I, do I know that it's going to last until he's dropped off with them? Uh, combined with what the doc has done? 
did you roll on that? We had a partial success. Um, typically, use magic lasts about half an hour to an hour. Um, so it's not that far. You can probably you can probably bank on sending the Tesla uh, with him in it, and it it'll last at least that long. I was gonna say otherwise, monster trap in the MRAP. Oh right. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, you can bank on on what you've done lasting that long. It's not that far. Okay, uh, so she'll uh, close the door. Um, I was going to say she chains him to the seat, but I don't know if she has chains in the Tesla. So she sends it off so that um, the Tesla screeches away um, and Abby moves back um, and kind of pulls the, the leather jacket up from the ground. And then, like, just she takes a deep breath and she looks at the the portal and uh, she walks up to uh, uh, Hanks and uh, she kind of says a little harsher than uh, is is warranted in the moment. Get to work. How can I help? Close it. And uh, he will very methodically um, collect his uh, the same triangulation sort of array that uh, that Rex happened upon him when they first met. Uh, he sort of sets that up at two points um, parallel to the portal, and then one directly in front of it in a you know, in a, in a triangle. And, um, and since this didn't fully play out the first time, I guess he, as the points begin to calibrate, uh, they were glowing with a, I believe like a purple ish energy last time. Um, he has tuned it more so to what he believes to be a more like, demonic frequency and so they they grow they glow that similar uh dark red blackish energy it, it looks it looks very similar to the energy that the demons seem to possess um not quite the same it definitely has this like artificial look to it but it's mm -hmm. i think uh, hopefully close enough okay um, and he tries to close the portal. We gonna find out if it's close enough. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't think this is science. I think this is weird science. Quite weird. I don't know what else it would be. Um, okay, let's go ahead and roll plus weird. And, um, oh my god. I believe you had a plus one for... Uh, oh. Four. Okay. You place the device. You power it up. You think you've got it close enough. Um... Almost immediately, uh, Hanks, I think you realize that something has gone wrong. Um, you're intimately familiar with the things that you make. I think almost immediately you realize, holy shit, this is going to be bad. Sparks start to fly uh, from the device, and you see the uh, this sort of artificially uh, dark red energy that you have created start to move across the portal. Um, you all hear cracking sounds as uh, the concrete around the portal physically starts to break apart and fall away, and the crack in the wall starts to widen. And it sort of mixes 
this uh, this dark energy sort of mixes with the red that was already there, and it starts to swirl. It doesn't get a lot bigger, but it does widen just enough for a person about the size of Rex to fit through. And before any of you can say anything, holding Sally's sword and a gun, Rex tries again, takes off sprinting towards the portal, and disappears into it. And as you all stand there, in shock at what has just transpired, we're going to leave the four of you there. And I want to end today... Sally. It is dark around you, Sally. You can't see anything. You can't hear anything. But boy, can you feel it. The boiling of your demonic blood, the pain in your chest and stomach where you were speared through by whatever unnatural fuck that was. You start to hear around you uh, almost the sound of like a breeze picking up. Kind of like a whistling. And you feel oddly warm. And then almost echoing around you. You're not entirely sure where it's coming from. But you hear. Salgos. Can you hear me? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's been some time since you've heard my voice. You don't recognize it. I suppose I can forgive you if not. A mother's love is supposed to be unconditional. Hey, Mom. You found yourself in quite the predicament. Sally, born of Bashaba, pledged to Zatharon, hunted by his children, killed, no less. And amongst all that, a desperate attempt at a mortal life, teaching, dating, Hunting your own kind alongside humans, a child of the fates, and a Nephilim, no less. How long did you think you could hold on to this farce? Wow, that's just like every Christmas and Thanksgiving all boiled into one. Just, yeah, yeah. It's Real I authentic. suppose I'm making up for lost time. What do you want? <laughs> you. To behave. You always were a headstrong child. I assume you inherited that from your father. 
Not that he's in any state to be answering question. Yeah. It's time to start over, Salgaz. And this time, don't disappoint me. And everything goes quiet. And that is where we are going to end our session for today. Assuming that I sound regular again, because I can't hear myself. <laughs> so, I'm going to leave you with that for now. Thank you, everybody for hanging out with us today. Thank you to my wonderful players for going on that ride with me and for letting me narrate some of the terrible things you wanted to do, including running through a hell portal. At the end of the session, the Keeper will ask the following questions. Did we conclude the current mystery? Uh, which onion level layer of this mystery <laughs> did we concluded the mystery of the mystery of the demons that were in the warehouse I will say you concluded the mystery of who was after and trying to kill Daniel Elliott which is where this started so yes concluded for now did you save someone from certain <laughs> death or worse Well, the answer is no. <laughs> oh no, we saved that one guy by not killing him, but that doesn't count. But because we but, wouldn't Hector did have save killed? the woman in the <laughs> in the chair. And so then it's we Hector's killed her. Copy that. <laughs> but if they if if they had succeeded, I mean Hellmouth, I mean, you know, I think they are no the longer plan. after Daniel Elliott. <laughs> And we family, saved Daniel Elliott. Which I think was kind of the point of this one. You don't want to get too galaxy brain <laughs> over these questions. I will give you that one as well. Did you learn something new and important about the world? Yes, we learned you can open a portal to the not not heaven. Not demon hell. realm. The, the demon realm. The, demon the abyss. Realm. Sure. Do you learn something new and important about one of the hunters? Sally disintegrates when she dies. Uh huh. Which is uh -huh. very useful. Yeah. She won't leave a body now that we know Time that. Magic. <laughs> Sally did learn some, some more stuff about Abby's abilities. Yeah. Well, we'll give you all four for that one. So, two XP for everyone. Sweet. Sally also receives these. Oh, okay. She still exists in the universe. There are her XP. So, that is where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you, everybody, so much for going on that particular ride. We will debrief and everything, obviously. Uh, so, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us in chat. Um, we will be back one week from today on December 20th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time to see what happens next. In the meantime, we have a lot of other stuff going on on the channel this week, including the Play Meal episode on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time of Elegant Magics, the second season of our Good Society game, as well as a bunch of other stuff as well. You can check our schedule. It is here on Twitch. It is also on our Twitter. It is also on our Discord. Uh, anything anyone would like to say? I'm not going to oh, say there any are last several words things I'd like to say. <laughs> Anything you'd like to say to the audience? Before we leave. I don't know if it was. I didn't say it at the beginning, 
but I'll say it now. We have our finale of Neon Souls uh, Season 1 That's on right. Friday. So uh, come join us for that. We're going to take a week off because the next one will be the 25th. And a lot of people might be celebrating uh, Christmas. Uh, so uh, we'll come back for Season 2 on the 1st. But join us for our finale on, on Friday. Yeah, Season 1 finale. Got Maybe Evil Twins. Yeah. Got people losing arms. I lost an arm. The last one. Yeah. It's been fun. Very traumatizing. And now I'm taking it out on all of you. <laughs> Absolutely kidding. Uh, thank you, everybody. We love you so much. And we will see you one week from today for the next episode of Slaying 101. But until then, good game and good night, Internet. <laughs>